This is HighIntensityBusiness.com with Lawrence Neal, helping you achieve your health and fitness goals. Become a great personal trainer and build your high-intensity strength training business. This episode is brought to you by ARX, the most innovative, efficient, and effective all-in-one exercise machines I have ever seen. I was really impressed with my ARX workout. The intensity and adaptive resistance was unlike anything I've ever experienced. I love how the machine enables you to increase the negative load to fatigue target muscles more quickly. And I love how the workouts are effortlessly quantified. The software tracks maximum force output, rate of work, total amount of work done and more in front of you on screen, allowing you to compete with your previous performance to give you and your clients real-time motivation. The ARX uses a computer-controlled motor to give you the exact amount of resistance your clients need 100% of the time. This means that the resistance can never become dangerous, is intuitive and simple to use, and can provide you with all of the results you and your clients are looking for in a fraction of the time. ARX is highly effective and efficient in delivering all of the benefits of exercise, including increased strength, muscle mass, cardiovascular conditioning, bone mineral density, and injury recovery. As well as being utilized by many high-intensity trainers to deliver highly effective and efficient workouts to their clients, ARX comes highly recommended by world-class trainers and brands, including Bulletproof, Tony Robbins, and Ben Greenfield Fitness. To find out more about ARX and get $500 off install when you place an order, please go to arxfit.com and mention HIB, that's High Intensity Business, in the How Did You Hear About Us field. So again, to get $500 off install when you place an order, head on over to arxfit.com and enter HIB in the How Did You Hear About Us field. Hey, it's Lawrence here bringing you another episode on High Intensity Business. Uh, And in this episode, I interviewed Bram Kroeska, and I really hope I'm saying Bram's name correctly there. Um, Bram is the co-founder and director of training and development for Fit20. And Fit20 are one of, if not the fastest growing, high-intensity training franchises in the world. They've got, I think at this stage, well over, I want to say 140, 150 uh, facilities around the world. Uh, I could be getting that number quite wrong. Um, and uh, they're just a very, very impressive business. So I wanted to get Bram on the podcast to uh, understand his story better and ask him a whole lot of interesting questions. And in this um, podcast, which I think you're really going to enjoy, um, we talk about the Fit20 origin story, how him and Walter started the business. Um, we talked about his skepticism. Now, Bram comes from a, a physical therapy background, so it was fascinating to hear how he had to kind of um, undo a lot of his previous beliefs uh, and how he had to kind of overcome some of his skepticism for high intensity training. We talked about the healthcare system and how Fit20 is having a fantastic impact on helping to unburden the healthcare system and how that may play a role in in part of Fit20's mission. And we talk about why they decided not to focus on nutrition. This is a really fascinating um, part of the Fit20 strategy as they just focus on the strength training aspect. I know a lot of you out there uh, have a nutrition component to your business and that's absolutely fine, but it's just interesting to hear why certain businesses decide to be more focused and decide not to get involved in nutrition and perhaps they uh, partner with other third parties to, to deal with that. Um, and then lastly, we probably, and we probably spend most time on this, we talk about training programming. That is one of Bram's key roles within Fit20 is designing the training programming, the training system. Um, and I, I challenge Bram on this a fair bit because they really do focus on the minimum effective dose and a small handful of exercise exercises, um, whereas other studios might focus on, you know, 10 plus exercises, Fit20 tend to focus on a lot less than that because they really just want to get the biggest bang for their buck for clients um, and provide a very, very efficient workout. So we discussed that at length and this is such a fun conversation. I think you're going to learn a lot listening to Bram talk about the thinking behind Fit20 and behind some of their training programming. If you enjoy the podcast, please subscribe on your favorite platform and please please head on over to highintensitybusiness.com forward slash tactics to get free resources to help you grow, improve, and start your high-intensity training business. And without any further ado, please enjoy this podcast with Bram Kroeska. Lawrence Still here, and welcome back 
to highintensitybusiness.com. This is episode 279. And today's guest is Bram Kruska, which last name I probably completely butchered and Bram can correct me. What, how do you pronounce your last name again, Bram, in your, the way you do it? I did it fine there, Lawrence. You said oh. Kruska. Oh, you're, I you're, it. <laughs> you're a native Dutch speaker. <laughs> Hardly. Um, so let's continue with your bio, Bram. So Bram became a physical therapist and found his first job in Chicago, then San Diego at the Mossberg Physical Therapy Institute, where he was introduced to medical exercise therapy, specific training for the optimal stimulus for tissue regeneration. He then went on to become a master of orthopedic manual therapy at Ola Grimsby Institute, exploring scientific therapeutic exercise progressions and the role of nutrition in disease and how dietary advice can help reduce tissue inflammation. Eventually came back to the Netherlands and worked in physical and manual therapy till 2016. Um, in 2004, Bram became a consultant for New Vitality, the predecessor to the Fit20 franchise, which sounds like that was a pretty good decision. And fast forward to now, he is the co-founder of Fit20. Yeah. That was, uh, was yeah. Go, go on, sorry, no, you go. No, yeah, that was a good decision. Um, <laughs> I was still in the middle of uh, physical therapy at that time as well, but um, right, right, we'll, this, we'll we'll get into that. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, no, I was just going to say, uh, last bit of that bio there, you are the, the co founder of Fit20 and director of training and development. And I just want to say, before we get started, welcome to the show, Bram. I really appreciate you taking the time. You're welcome, uh, Lawrence. Glad to be here. Absolutely. So, firstly, before we get into things, I just wanted to say congratulations because I think you guys won a couple of awards for being a great franchise last year. Yeah, we sure did. Uh, we've won for a number of years in a row now. Uh, All right. Uh, in the Netherlands for the franchise uh, organization, uh, either as a as a middle-sized company, and so we're we're moving up the the chain. Great. Look, I it, it cut out for a very a split second there. So how did, how is this? How did you win that award, and what were they sort of measuring for that? Um, yeah, well, we've, we've won because of various um, aspects, mm -hmm. but part of it is presentation, how much media attention you get, uh, what, what you offer in terms of quality, um, price quantity, many different things um, mm -hmm. are actually included, uh, including presentations. Um, so every, every franchise that participates uh, has to do a presentation. Awesome. So... I, you know, obviously I've spoken to Walter um, quite a bit, uh, you know, more than you and I have spoken and learned from him kind of about the Fit20 story, which is just fascinating and continues to amaze me. Um, and obviously you were, you were very much involved in, in, in co-founding the business. And I'd love to hear kind of more about the genesis of Fit20. So how did that, you know, I sort of alluded to it there at the end of your bio, and, and you started obviously consulting um, for New Vitality. So, how did that? How did the Fit Twenty sort of um, come to be? Yeah, well, we we uh, pretty much started from from a lifestyle company. So, New Vitality was uh, where we started. That was the end of two thousand and four, and that was basically already founded by uh, Walter and Sophie, Derma and Willem. So the four of them had already started New Vitality, uh, basically uh, lifestyle enhancing enhancers, and so many different services and products to uh, yeah, to to increase your wellness. Um, but also training was was part of it, and um, I was I was asked to be a consultant for it towards the end of two thousand four. Um, Walt and I went to New York to uh, to get some lessons in uh, in high intensity training, and then we uh, we started off in 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 Nunspeet, a very small town in the Netherlands. Uh, thinking, well, if it would work there, it would work anywhere, which uh, it has proven to <laughs> to do. Uh, but then then we were um, just starting and and not necessarily thinking immediately of franchise. It was more um, a one studio. Uh, company at that time, but pretty soon we 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 saw the potential of particularly the training method, because um, it was always let's say uh, spearheading the business, 
um, very loyal customers, great results. I mean, um, in, the, in the early days, Walt and I were still learning, um, but we, we were actually amazed by the results people were getting from the Fit20 training. And uh, we had to fill in the, 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 let's say, the gaps in terms of knowledge and, and how, to, uh, how to put it all together. But it, it was a great start and, and a lot of uh, new things were, were actually found out and gradually uh, the, the idea of franchising came up uh, also to, to offer this uh, great potential to more and more people. So how did you and Walter originally meet? When did you first meet? Well, we met, uh, I think I was, I was asked by, uh, I think I was asked by Willem. So Willem probably first asked me, or Walter himself, in terms of what, what, what do I think about high intensity training? And my background was, uh, as you were uh, saying in the, in the bio, uh, very scientific in terms of exercise uh, therapy or exercise medical exercise therapy so it was it was trying to figure out well how would this work um, that's that's how we actually first met uh, towards the end of 2004 uh, having some first discussions about it i was part of actually a medical advisory board in the in the early months of fit 20 what of course at that time was still called uh, new vitality and that's how it all came about, and, and that's how it gradually evolved. Because you, I remember um, Walter saying how you both went over to, I think, um, spend a bit, bit of time with um, Adam Zuckerman and Inform Fitness. Is that correct? To learn more right. about yeah. the business yeah. and high intensity training? Yeah. 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 So that was in, in probably the beginning of 2005. So this okay. is quite a while ago already. So, but you, your background's fascinating. So I've, I've spoken to a few people who have been. Um, physical therapists turned high intensity training practitioners. Um, there's a few now actually that come to mind. Um, you know, Paddy Durrell has a, a physical therapy background, and and obviously Bryce Lee is a, a doctor of physical therapy, I believe. Um, and it's always great to see that. And I just wondered, were you were you into or had come across high intensity strength training before you and Walter decided to go to to New York? Well, not not in the way we actually uh, met it, um, as as what we say is now high intensity. Of course, intensity and, and time and the whole the whole interrelationship between intensity and time was was already covered back in the physical therapy, manual therapy education that I that I followed. Um, but but high intensity training as as a method of training, I did, I. Really didn't know. When I was living. I, I I'd hardly heard of it. So um, it was basically a, a first that we met it around two thousand four. And so, that's so, that's how. It, sorry, go yeah, on. That's how. It, yeah. No, that's that's how it built. Uh, but intensity and time was, of course, a, a known from medical exercise therapy. Just not the application in terms of what nowadays we call uh, high intensity training. What did you call it there? Sorry, intensity of time. I, I misheard that. Yeah, if you if you plot a graph between intensity on, on let's say the uh, vertical bar, yeah. and the horizontal bar, that that relationship, an inverse relationship, of course, has been known for a long time. I mean, uh, Mr. Delorme already started it with his one RM, and, uh, and particularly in manual therapy. Uh, Let's say the Otvar Holton curve was, which which is of course something nobody has ever heard of. But the curve was already known in terms of what intensity and time have, have uh, to do with each other. And so you yeah. do so many reps, it would be a certain intensity, and another amount of repetitions, it would be a different one. Yeah. So you would have, so I know the graph you mean now. I think I think it's in Power of Ten, and maybe it's in Body by Science, and other popular high intensity training books um and so you've got the you've got time on the y-axis right and then you've got intensity on the x-axis and it starts uh the far left hand side of the x-axis the line is at the the the, the highest it can be and then it, it it sort of goes into a diagonal line into the bottom right hand corner is that is yeah, that correct 
Well, we would typically draw it differently, so the the intensity would be on the y-axis and the uh -huh. time on the on the x-axis. -axis. But it, it's more that there's an inverse relationship between. Yes. The two. <laughs> yeah. So I probably didn't explain that too well. So appreciate you correcting me. I'm sure the listeners are familiar with the graph, so I would check out uh, probably Power of Ten or um, some of the other high intensity training books out there to get a visual representation. In fact, I might just try and link it up in the show notes so people, because there might be people listening to this who, who might not be familiar, um, to give them a visual reference for that. Um, okay, so you were aware of that concept because maybe that, that sounds like that was quite well known in your uh, discipline. Um, but it sounds like your journey to New York was really your first exposure to high intensity strength training, how we know it now. Is that fair to say? Yeah, it's fair to say. Yeah. 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 And and were you skeptical? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, um, like everybody else, I think um, you know, when you hear that that because I, I basically my background is a lot of the endurance sports. So um basically you have to face the fact that you've been uh, spending a lot of time achieving or trying to achieve certain results that can be achieved in a much more effective way. And so that's a bit of a shocker mm. until, you, uh, until you do your first uh, proper high-intensity exercise. And then uh, the skepticism is replaced by uh, sensation or... Uh, Exhaustion. <laughs> <laughs> I would say a bodily uh, shock or, or <laughs> uh, it comes in in such a way that you can't really uh, express that in words. I mean, only people have, that have actually tried this can, can actually relate to the, to the sensation that you get if you properly do a high-intensity training exercise. That's it, right? You can talk about this stuff till you're blue in the face, but until you actually just get that person into a high-intensity training workout, it's, it's impossible to really get them to understand what, what it is. Um, exactly. So, we, so we, we, we've come up with a free introductory training mm -hmm. just to allow people to actually get a physical sensation and, and use that to, to turn around their skepticism. Because otherwise it's like, uh, it, it sounds, the weird things, it sounds too good to be true. Um, so people yes. need to feel it, to, uh, to experience it and to, to, you know, really get that click on. I mean, I had a, had a great experience again about two weeks ago. I, I had a fortunate uh, opportunity to go to Sweden. We we're starting out in uh, in Sweden, in the beautiful town of Kungsbacka. Mm. And um, there was this lady. I was I was helping the new trainers there to, to get started. And there was this older lady, about 80 plus, and she could hardly raise her, her arms or uh, above shoulder height. Uh, she was very weak from uh, having been ill a few years ago. And then, um, but she, she basically started to, uh, she was a volunteer there to, to at least uh, have some of the trainees uh, get a chance to work with her. And then she did the leg press at, at a certain moment and you saw the lights go on in her eyes and, and, and she basically got it. I mean, she she got the sensation like, hey, this is this is what works, and this is going to be beneficial to my health, my fitness, my strength, and my, you know, important for her 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 independence. I mean, she was living on her own, eighty plus years old, and uh, she wanted to stay at home. Yeah, I love hearing stories like that. Um, it's so inspiring and just really motivates me to want to. Um, open our studio here in Galway and by the time this is out we should be uh, well on our way or, or or actually let me rephrase we should be well we, we'd have opened the doors for a while um, and so I'm really excited for that um, I once went to Sweden only for like half a day um, with my fiance and her friend we were actually staying in Denmark and she took us to we drove over the bridge to Malmo is it one of yeah, those Malmo. cities right. yeah and uh, all I can really remember is we weren't there that long and I think I spent like 10 pounds on like a fridge magnet um, <laughs> which which was because obviously it's very expensive there and um, uh, was it the, the currency is is it uh, Swedish Kron 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 kroner or something Kron Right. Yeah, yeah, right. and then we ended up having a meal, um, and my fiance can probably hear this actually because she's in the room next door. And um, 
I think we ended up eating like dim sum or we weren't we didn't eat any kind of like actual Swedish <laughs> cultural food while we were there which I, well not that I can recall anyway um, so that that's my only memory and uh, obviously that's a really uh, you know short uh, time in Sweden and <laughs> I think in the future we might have to, uh, to have a longer time there to get a better sense of the culture and things um, uh, go visit our studio over there and see Oh, I'll definitely. Oh, oh, next time I'm anywhere near one of your studios, I'll be popping in for a workout for sure. Um, I think probably the the the, the closest uh, I'll come to that will be uh, next time I'm back in the UK because obviously Fit Twenty's popping up all over the place. Yeah, we got about five studios in UK. Um, yeah. you, you're in London, right? Sorry. You you are based in London or are you are you more no, no, in no. I'm 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 Ireland. current I'm based in Galway in Ireland. I'm in Ireland. Ireland. Next, that that yes. island next door, yeah. <laughs> um so, <laughs> no. so so yeah. but I do I do come over to the UK every every now and again. So yeah. um all right. So one thing I was going to so I was sort of asking you there about interested in how you guys met, but um, what, why did you decide to to build this big business? I mean, you, you clearly had this you know pretty successful background in in physical therapy. What was sort of driving you to want to to do this? What was the motivation? Um, well, I th- I think I I saw the enormous potential in this business. I mean, I at that time had already been. Uh, physical therapist, manual therapist for 25 years or so, 20 years. And um, this, in a way, that is all, all working on, on curing people, you know, and this is all prevention. Uh, and it's great, it's great to be involved in a business that's actually on, uh, at the other end of the spectrum where you can say, hey, what we can contribute to people. Um, can actually help them to not get the stuff that I was helping people. You, know, you got some weird stuff in the Netherlands, you know, we got some real good uh, fall prevention programs, but if you can keep people strong, they don't need to fall. So um, one of the things was like, hey, this is a great business. Yeah, we see incredible results with people in, in very short periods of time. Uh, and then you do things that, that uh, that are just on the other end of, of what you could be doing. And so you're more working in prevention than in, in curing. Um, so I saw potential. We all saw the potential and, and uh, we went for it. So we... Uh, I'd that's say that was a pretty, pretty good bet, that. Yeah, it's, it's, good, it's good, good opportunity. <laughs> uh, that's an interesting story. and. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's it made me think of what Doug says, you know, and Doug McGuff talks about how uh, ultimate exercise is like the antithesis of the ER. Um, you know, one is one is dealing with the issues long after they've uh, come about and, and trying to save people from the brink, only to have them come back the next week with the same problems, and the other one is preventing it from happening in the first place. Um, and it's it's yeah, it's a it's a crazy. Um, uh, just dynamic going on there, uh, and no, I commend you for for obviously you know seeing that opportunity and realizing that maybe your energy is better spent in the prevention side of the the equation there. Yeah, I mean, I think I think uh, a lot of a lot of it can be uh, done on the prevention side. I mean, we got many many customers that, that have uh, metabolic syndrome, so you know, mm. including the, the diabetic uh, or di- diabetes type. Type two, yeah, um, and we and we see so many improvements in in that, let's say, category of uh, customer, and where they can actually uh, get off medication or their lives improve. Um, so often, let's say, uh, a catalyst to you know, change your lifestyle, um, be better in your, with your nutrition, become more regular. Um, so we see such great results from from just the training. I mean, uh, mm. I, 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 there's so many examples. I worked in rehab for for a number of years when I first started in physical therapy uh, out in a big hospital in Chicago. And and like what you said about uh, Doug McGovern with the ER. I mean, there's so many things you see in in rehab that you that you say, well, why why did people end up there in the first place? And, 
you can do so much more on the prevention side and, and uh, you know, if you even were to look at it from an economical perspective I mean, it save society billions of dollars just by working on the prevention of absolutely metabolic and, and whatever whatever is there yeah I, I've, uh, yeah. as you might know, Bram, I've uh, got a newborn baby and um, he's now just over six weeks old. Um, and so we, we've we been, you know, in and out of the hospital quite a lot, obviously during the birth and then the various appointments and check-ins you have after that. Um, and it's just, I've become very aware just how overloaded the healthcare system is here in Ireland. Um, and it's no different in the UK with the NHS. And, and I, I understand it's very similar in the US in terms of the burden put on healthcare by all these people that are sick. Um, and, you know, I, I kind of first thought the parking's terrible in this hospital. There's, so, you know, there's the parking's always completely stacked. There's nowhere to park. Um, and it's quite, you could un- understand that people might say, oh, we need more parking facilities and more space. But really, that's just putting a plaster on the issue. It's not dealing with the root cause. Maybe it's just my theory that. You know, if we were to reduce the burden on hospital by somehow getting people to really make better decisions in terms of their diets and training and lifestyle, that you wouldn't see anywhere near the 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 amount of, um, I guess, uh, you know, people you have coming into hospitals to get treated. Yeah, and the burden would be much reduced on everyone, not only the hospital, but obviously, like you say, that the taxpayer and society as a whole. Right. Um, so, but big problem. project. <laughs> Yeah, big project. And and apart from from the benefits to people themselves, you know, it's like, I mean, we get customers from from the occasional sixteen year old who comes with their parents to uh, people that are ninety four years old, and it's it's a broad spectrum of uh, of society, and they do well. I mean, That's so improve, cool. They, they improve their fitness, they improve their health, and all in all subdivisions of that. Uh, you know, get stronger, better balance, more, yeah. more, more conditioning. It's all Cause, in there. Because you're in a you're at a place now where you've got hundreds of thousands of workouts, right? Uh, and and a, a big pool of data in respect to the outcomes you're seeing with all of your clients, the improvements, like you said, they're coming off meds, reversing type two diabetes, et cetera, et cetera. So, are you seeing this happen? Like, because because it's like. Do you let me ask one question at a time here? So are you seeing that happen like across the board? Are you constantly getting good feedback? Because it'd be interesting hearing from someone who's really working with a large population, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's like like we, we see uh, many of the things that you just mentioned. We, we still like to do much more uh, research with it. And you, you probably know that we, we've have, we have had contacts with James Steele right, from mm-hmm. yeah. South University. So... Uh, and he's seen he's seen some of our data, and he would love to work with it because it's uh, you know a lot of a lot of researchers they work with small populations that are in, in university or in college, and they often they are healthy young uh, students that are part of uh, research populations. But yeah, we got the whole population. We got uh, yeah. We by now we've got millions of trainings, so we've got a lot of data that we still need to. Uh, to really put to good use and then we can actually uh, show more than what we do at the moment but it would be great to uh, to show more in, in terms of what it does for diabetes type 2 or what it does for other metabolic problems or how it inf- improves people's health fitness strength yeah this episode is brought to you by our sponsor arx are you looking to create a cutting edge high intensity training facility Are you confused on what equipment to use or how to separate yourself from the masses? Well, then ARX Fit might be the answer you're looking for. I asked Mike Palano from ARX a few questions about how ARX machines are challenging the status quo of the exercise industry around the globe. Mike, if you could, give the listeners a quick summary of why ARX is so different from the traditional machines or tools they're used to seeing in most exercise facilities. ARX is totally different than anything you've seen before. This isn't just another weight stack machine. We've looked at the last 40 years of exercise technology and used that knowledge to create something entirely new. ARX uses a new form of resistance, a motor, and we pair that motor with computer software 
so that we can maximize the safety, effectiveness, and efficiency of your workouts. So you may be asking, okay, but how does ARX compare to weights? Traditional machines you see in gyms today are based on lifting metal weights and battling gravity. What people don't realize is that when you're forced to lift a static weight like this, one that doesn't adapt or change while you use it, you're underloading yourself rep after rep. And this unnecessarily limits your ability to make improvements. With ARX, we've taken a totally different approach. We removed weights and gravity from the equation altogether. Instead, ARX combines our patented motorized resistance with our custom computer software to provide you with the world's safest, most effective, and most quantified form of resistance training ever. When you train with ARX, you are training to your perfect level of resistance, both positively and negatively 100% of the time. No more guessing what weight to use, ARX does all of that for you, instantly and automatically. We'll also track and measure every second of every rep, so you can quantify all of your workouts to find out if you're improving and by exactly how much. Whether your goals are bigger muscles, increased strength, stronger bones, or just to look good in a bathing suit, ARX can help you achieve all of these and more, but do so in a fraction of the time it would take compared to traditional equipment. If you're looking for the most efficient, most effective, and most quantified piece of exercise equipment on the market today, then look no further than ARX. Thanks, Mike. That all sounds really impressive. If you'd like to learn more about ARX, visit arxfit.com and mention that you heard about ARX on the High Intensity Business Podcast to receive an exclusive deal of $500 of shipping and installation of your ARX machines. Couple, couple of questions on this. Um, you know, obviously, nutrition plays a huge role in someone's body composition and their health. Um, and you know, we know that strength training definitely helps uh, and allows fat loss to be more permissive. You know, increasing things like insulin sensitivity and um, the the different myokines that are released and the the, the change in adipose tissue from from you know white adipose to brown and things like that, which help with fat loss. Um, but you know, from what I understand, at Fit Twenty. Uh, and, and perhaps this is the right strategy. Uh, you don't do the nutrition component. You just do the strength training. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. And how yeah. do you handle the nutrition diet questions or the, you know, people come in, I want to lose 40 pounds. How do you deal with that? Well, you know, like maybe, maybe one step back would be to say why we decided not to work with uh, nutrition in the, in the franchise. And so uh, we did a new fatality. So in, in the predecessor of uh, Fit20, uh, we worked with uh, nutrition for quite some time, and uh, Dirma and Sophie uh, have a, not, a lot of knowledge about it. But what we found is that if we can train people 20 minutes per week, we we have them in terms of you can give such a stimulus in the in that 20, uh, so that uh, you cover most of what what the, the physical. The body needs in terms of, of physical conditioning and exercise. With nutrition, we found that that compliance is a big, big uh, problem. So, where with once a week uh, high intensity training, you can say, "Hey, there is compliance." Uh, with nutrition, it's very hard. I mean, you'd almost have to go with people to their homes and check what they're eating and, and what they're drinking and what they're snacking on to get a good. Uh, sense of what what they're doing. So we've always found that nutrition is difficult, um, and it requires a lot of knowledge. So when we turned uh, to the franchise, we decided, okay, let's only work with the training. We came from a complete lifestyle uh, program, including nutrition and sleep, uh, all the all the pillars under training. But uh, decided to only work on the training. That's what we're best at. Uh, let's stay with that and then advise people or advise our franchisers or FOs, we call them FOs, to, to work with people in their direct environment who basically are good in nutrition and can advise our clients in, in that area. So you would defer to those people? Yeah, we, we, we'd actually advise FOs to, uh, to find somebody you can work with who is now roughly in the same area in terms of uh, philosophy about uh, training and, and nutrition and then, and then try to work together. 
Yeah. Um, just you, you cut out for a moment back there. And I think what you said was you, you guys used to focus on nutrition and sleep as well as training. Is that correct? I just want to complete yes. that. Yeah, that's that's correct. We, we yeah. basically are a lifestyle company. Right. Um, yeah. where, where basically all the pillars that are on the training were also uh, accentuated. So we work with your nutrition, uh, recovery, uh, sleep. We even had things for in the home to, to do home improvements, get cleaner water, better air. Um, but we decided when we, when we went into the franchise business to, to only focus on the training. It doesn't, doesn't mean that we're not advising clients on the, on the training in the studios to, no, to look at, at other components of, of health. But uh, basically, we focus initially on the training. Yeah, I think that was very smart. And uh, I thought that was very interesting why you decided to do that. And you know, I agree with that as a strategy. Um, you know, you're, I believe, uh, Bram, you're, you know, kind of the brains or, or certainly one of the brains um, behind the the training method there at Fit20. Um, and do you want to just talk us through how you came to decide that you would offer, and I believe it's just group training, isn't it? Or, or two people at a time. I could be wrong there. Maybe it's one-on-one -on -one and two people at a time uh, and just the 20 minutes. So do you want to just run through kind of the thinking behind the training system, training yep. method? Yeah. Now we, we, we found out that, you know, to make a great business model and next to a great training, we also want a great business model that we actually need to be time efficient. And, um, we we'd already found out that to, to give the training you need five or six exercises. We we basically only use compound exercises. And we train as much muscle mass in a short period of time as possible within um, going to a momentary muscular failure within a time span of about one minute and twenty to two minutes. And after five, six exercises we've done enough we've done enough um, We've given the body enough stimulus, and that takes that takes about ten to twelve minutes if you if you average it out to one minute or forty per exercise or something. So in a in a very short period of time, we already got the stimulus, um, and it basically came to hey we're we're done within twenty minutes, and um, so, so if you can do that in twenty minutes, why spend more time? And so as we've already decided, uh, hey, we, we focus on the training only. Uh, the trainer will ask the customer some questions before they start, give the training, summarize the training afterwards, and the customer can go on their way. So for, for many reasons, it's it's a great way to uh, to combine it. Why spend more time if you don't need it? Yeah, and... My, I guess my interpretation of that would be really that you've got what you've got there is the minimum effective dose, right? Um, and, and it was probably Doug that perhaps made that popular in the exercise slash hit space uh, using that type of that that, that acronym. Um, or not acronym, but you know expression. So, however, there are some obviously other other businesses out there, other practitioners who would say. Well, that's the minimum. And really, you know, if you're going to get a, a full, complete workout, perhaps you would need abduction, adduction, and uh, some more single joints, simpler movements to address other the, the entire musculature. And that, that might be achieved in, say, 10 exercises. Um, so did you make a conscious choice that not to go, not to do that? And I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, we did. We, we actually chose to, to go with the stimulus. Um, you know, rather than saying, well, I need to train this muscle or that muscle or even muscle group, uh, we decided to go with, let's say, the, the, the total amount of muscle that you have on your body. So all the, all the muscles that create your movements, if you put them all together, that's your muscle mass. And if you can stimulate as much of that as possible within a very short time period, uh, then you're effective, efficient, you do what you need to do. And you, you create your effect from that. Um, so, yeah, we, we didn't add isolation exercise. We, truth be told, we in New Fertility, we, we, we could possibly do 30 exercises. 
But we found out that, let's say, motor learning is so much more difficult than, than mm. we in thought that you need very simple exercises that uh, customers can remember from week to week. And so see the way it works with non-variation, where the tendency is always to do more exercises or try to vary it. Uh, but we, we have built in adaptation at in, in the moment that the customer proves they can they can get their momentary muscular failure beyond two minutes and they use proper form and proper breathing technique and proper pace and rhythm. Then we, we say, okay, well, now you can go a little, a little bit more increased weight. And that's where you get your new adaptation. So we, we've made a lot of choices in in bringing the training method into the into the franchise and, and yeah chose or made all decisions based on hey what is the best reason for why we would do it mm. i i wonder right if the more kind of in my mind maximal approach of slightly longer you know 30 minutes maybe and 10 exercises with for overall development may appeal more to the type a executive high powered lawyer type who maybe is just ultra competitive and wants those types of results but still in an efficient manner um now i'm thinking i'm just curious you know with regard to fit 20 and the business model that you've landed on in terms of the five or six exercises for 20 minutes what, what target market has that most resonated with? I, I know Walter may have said this to me before, but I can't recall. Who is it that is most that's most appealing to um, in, in your business in, in terms of your client base? Well, I think it, it it can appeal to just about anybody. Like I said earlier, we we got people or you know, youngsters that are maybe sixteen years old, and then and then the oldest person I've ever trained was ninety four. Yeah. But if you look, and then if you then look at say where do we find most of the customers? That's that's probably the the age group from somewhere around forty to let's say sixty sixty five. Mm -hmm. um, but but it varies. I mean, I'm, I'm quite sure there's there's depending on where you are. I mean, what you described as your type A high competitive types. Yeah, if you, if you open a studio in London. Uh, a financial center, you probably will get most of those uh, folks in your studio, but there's probably very different studios that have a different clientele. Mm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about what you just said there. The majority are kind of 40, 65, that kind of bracket. Then um, would I be fair in saying that maybe they're not as obsessed in physical development, but more in efficient way of getting out their health and improving their physique and quality of life um and therefore that that's why that's probably more, more likely to resonate with a shorter uh, more med style workout versus something that's i don't know going to give them even if you agree with what i'm saying i mean i know you may not agree um you know some maybe 10 or 20 percent more in their overall development like a, a 10 exercise style workout let's say <clears throat> well that that is that means that you're suggesting that that would be a better workout, but uh, you know. Okay, so I you think, don't agree with that? Is what you're saying? No, I think I think what people need, they can get within that 20 minutes. Um, yeah. we're, we're often we're often tempted to think in terms of um, a local a local effect. Mm. So and, and I I noticed uh, being a physical therapist who was sometimes involved with how do I get this tendon to become a better tendon eh, after a tendon injury. Well, what is so beautiful about high-intensity training is that it's actually using the, the, the global effects and not just the local effects, it's global effects. It's effects of the entire body, of all systems in the body, of all muscles, not just muscles. And then and then it's much more what is the signal signaling function of those muscles. So we're... we're very tempted to think of muscles as mechanical leverage machines or something, but it's it's actually it's actually living tissue that is that is creating a signal. And if that signal has already been created, all tissues basically will benefit from it because they feel that hey, this is a serious uh, optimal stimulus. We, we call it optimal stimulus in in our education. Sure. Uh, where we say, okay, well, we give such a strong stimulus to the system within the 20 minutes, uh, divided by those five or six exercises. But that 
the stimulus comes in so strong that the body will understand, hey, this is serious, serious business. I better get uh, working on, on adaptations. And so there's an, an up-ramping and an, an up-regulation of basically all systems to try to adapt to the stimulus that you just got. I think from all, all other uh, ways of looking at it, we, we, we all come from the high volume trainings. So we're always tempted to think that more is better, but actually I think what we're trying to, to bring across is that less is better, as long as the less is of a greater intensity. Um, and that, that curve we were talking about some time ago, intensity in time, uh, that also shows that there's an inverse relationship between intensity and time, that if you can tweak the, the parameters or the variables that can actually create a stimulus, you're there. So I, I, one of the other things I sort of hinted at earlier was just trying to ask or trying to find out about the um, type of session. Is it? Do you do any one-on-one? Is it all group, like two two people at a time? Is it or? Well, two. So uh, the personal trainer and then one customer, or the personal trainer and two customers. Okay. So um, right. So one-on-one or, or or two people in a in a small group. Yeah, if if you call a group two, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we feel like we don't we don't want to go to too many people. Eh? So a trainer has uh, a lot of work to do to try to help a customer not to, let's say, wiggle itself out of the exercise. And so intensity is is difficult. Uh, high intensity is difficult. So the customer will use all sorts of conversations to let's say, try to reduce intensity. So the trainer is very busy uh, correcting the client in terms of, hey, how is your breathing? How is your posture and technique? How is your pace and rhythm? And um, you can you can work with two people, but more than that becomes difficult. Mm, yeah, so, okay, so you feel like two is, is a, a maximum for your particular business model. Right, yeah. Yeah, in terms of getting a sufficient supervision. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you, so if you've got, let's say, I don't know, what what would the average Fit20 studio, how many machines would it have, the average studio? Uh, the average studio would have six machines. Okay. And then you can do uh, seven exercises on those six machines. Sure. So if you've got two people starting at the same time, you would have perhaps one person would start on maybe the leg press, another person would start on like a like a pull down or something, and then you would just cycle through in different order. Is that right? How, how does it work? Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. So you basically, um, because the studios are small, uh, you pretty much want to keep people in, in your sight. And so uh, people are so, people's bodies are so clever that they will uh, wiggle out, out of the exercises as soon as possible. So if they feel like I'm turning my back towards them, they'll already go into a wiggly mode. Yeah, or... <laughs> Compensation. So um, I, I I have to make sure people are in my field of vision, field of voice, and uh, and work with them. But then I, I would basically have them uh, on two machines that are adjacent, and then switch them back and forth. It'll work. It's uh, okay. it, it it requires skill from the trainer, but it's it's uh, a very workable situation. Awesome. So you you made the mistake of sending me your date of birth, Bram, in the in the email, and and I was able to sort of work out your age. Do you mind if I say your age publicly on the podcast? No, go ahead. <laughs> sixty two. Is that right? I got that uh, right. Sixty one. Sixty one. Sixty one. This year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the reason I I wasn't afraid to kind of say that is because you don't look. You look like you're twenty years younger than that. Well, thanks, uh, Lawrence. But but I could say, <laughs> hey. You got to do a fit 20 and it'll turn you 20 <laughs> years younger. Well, this is what I was going to ask you. Do you follow, like, tell tell us briefly about your uh, lifestyle. So do you follow the, the once a week or 20 minutes or, or what else do you do in order to, I appreciate that your genetics may play a role, but what, what things do you do to kind of optimize your own health and appearance and things? Well, very simple. I do a fit 20. So uh, I've been training now for 15 years, once a week. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, that's that's about it. In the in the early days, I uh, 
I, I was still doing a bit of uh, extra bicycling and running. But I uh, gradually came to the insight that, uh, hey, Fit20 is uh, all I need. Um, I do, I follow a yoga class once a week. Um, I, I have a healthy lifestyle. I've, I've had that, always had that. I probably have good genetics, but um, I'm quite convinced Fit20 contributes to looking younger. You, you know all the stuff about myokines and mm -hmm. growth hormone and what it does. And, um, yeah. and I think it, it shows. Yeah, it certainly does. Based on those um, photos you sent me, <laughs> um, I was I was very impressed. Uh, so that's very cool. What about in terms of your diet? What kind of do you follow a particular diet? Uh, I didn't. I didn't until a few months ago. So basically, um, we uh, we watched a program on TV that which affected my girlfriend and myself quite a bit. So we watched the Game Changer. So better mm -hmm. better don't watch it, uh, Lawrence change your point of view in terms of food and nutrition. <laughs> uh, so we turned to semi-vegan, and I say semi because often uh, it turns out to be vegetarian, but uh, mm -hmm. that's pretty much how we eat. Try Basically, not to eat too much, that's it. Just not too much, sorry you said that, just cut out for a second. Yeah, no, try not to eat too much. I, mean, mm -hmm. I think that's uh, that's where, it's, where you can have a lot of gains. <laughs> Very good. All right. Um, Bram, I really appreciate your time today on the podcast and uh, perhaps we'll do this again sometime and dig in some other topics related to, to Fit20 uh, and your own story. Uh, what's the best way for listeners to find out more about you and Fit20? Uh, well, there's a, different, there's a number of different ways. Um, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn, so you can find me on LinkedIn. That's uh, Bram Kruske. Um, you can, if you want to contact me, you can always send a mail to bram at fit20.nl. A good place to start is also info at fit20.nl. Yes, you have a lot of listeners in the US, so fit20usa.com is a way to to approach us, me. Um, if you're interested in franchise, fit20usafranchise.com. So there's a lot of lot of ways to uh, to get in touch um sometimes it, you know from, from even from the podcast people get the impression hey it's uh, mostly walter and bram but we got this great team behind us including big support teams so uh, if you send a, a message to info at fit20.nl there's a great support team that can actually pick up your emails and awesome. get you in touch with me or one of us I will make sure all of those links for if you if so there were some of the emails if people didn't hear them because it's a slight delay in the the connection that's fine all the links to the the emails that that Bram just listed will be in the show notes so if you want to get in touch because you're interested in checking out a Fit Twenty near you or you're an entrepreneur and you want to um, start or transition over to opening a Fit Twenty franchise then all the links will be in the show notes uh, over at highintensitybusiness.com just search for episode two hundred and sixty one. Um, and I just want to take a moment as well to say Bram and Walter are both members of uh, Hit Business Membership, um, along with a couple of your franchisees um, who are in the membership to, to really learn how they can improve and grow their high-intensity training businesses, get access to high-caliber community, access to blueprints and resources that are completely exclusive inside the membership, um, and also monthly Q&As of experts. So if you're interested in joining, please go to highintensitybusiness.com forward slash membership. Um, and again, to find the blog post for this episode and download the PDF transcript, please go to highintensitybusiness.com, search episode 279. And until next time, thank you very much for listening. Discover how to achieve your health and fitness goals, become a great personal trainer, and build a successful high-intensity training business. Check out highintensitybusiness.com. Highintensitybusiness.com. This episode is brought to you by ARX, the most innovative, efficient, and effective all-in-one exercise machines I have ever seen. I was really impressed with my ARX workout. The intensity and adaptive resistance was unlike anything I've ever experienced. 
I love how the machine enables you to increase the negative load to fatigue target muscles more quickly. And I love how the workouts are effortlessly quantified. The software tracks maximum force output, rate of work, total amount of work done and more in front of you on screen, allowing you to compete with your previous performance to give you and your clients real-time motivation. The ARX uses a computer-controlled motor to give you the exact amount of resistance your clients need 100% of the time. This means that the resistance can never become dangerous, is intuitive and simple to use, and can provide you with all of the results you and your clients are looking for in a fraction of the time. ARX is highly effective and efficient in delivering all of the benefits of exercise, including increased strength, muscle mass, cardiovascular conditioning, bone mineral density, and injury recovery. As well as being utilized by many high-intensity trainers to deliver highly effective and efficient workouts to their clients, ARX comes highly recommended by world-class trainers and brands, including Bulletproof, Tony Robbins, and Ben Greenfield Fitness. To find out more about ARX and get $500 off install when you place an order, please go to arxfit.com and mention HIB, that's High Intensity Business, in the How Did You Hear About Us field. So again, to get $500 off install when you place an order, head on over to arxfit.com and enter HIB in the How Did You Hear About Us field.